Hi everyone, today is February 8th, 2020, and this is the Duel Assessment, your podcast for Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links. My name is Green Ranger. This week, the KC Cup has started. We are in stage one of that. Um, so it's getting ready to select the next person to represent in the WCS. Talk about esports, some of the decks that are meta. It's pretty defined right now. And um, these are some of the decks you would like to bring to the KC Cup. But I'm sure there are plenty of other options. But it's a good idea to know what to expect at this point. Um, so a lot of little announcements going on. WCS 2020 has been announced. Dual Quest cards that just started last night. Doug Dimmit Duel has a Daedalus Ninja deck. This combines some of the new ninja cards and sea serpents. A lot of big play ninjas from the past. Um, we're also going to finish, speaking of that box, um, finish talking about Masters of Shadow, going over a lot of the R's and N's that were neglected, and going over you know some of the archetype cards, the Melodious, the Synchro Fusions, the Ninjas, and the few Worms that are there. And finally, in the Just Chatting section, we're going to talk about other games that people in this community play, other than Duel Links, other things they do. Uh, it's kind of tying into... My own week. So, speaking of my own week, I will talk very little about Duel Links in the Duel Links world. I hit Legend 1 with very few games. Maybe 10 or 12 wins, and I hit Legend 1. And this is just with Fortune Lady. So Fortune Lady in the beginning of the month is doing very well right now. Of course, this I can't say this for the Kaiba Cup, but in the ranked meta where it's a little bit worse, but we're still in the beginning of the month. It's still a lot of meta decks. Fortune Lady is doing pretty well. Uh, so Legend won there, and I've quit playing ranked so I could get through the KC Cup. Of course, I did hit King of Games, or I was a qualifier at some point, so I don't really have to do Stage 1 at all, but I'm finding my gems shoot up again, so I'm getting close to... I'm like 6,000-something gems now, so I'm definitely using this time to max out on all my gems, so I could definitely get through to buying cards again. So I'm going to get through Stage 1 of the Kyber Cup just for the rewards, but I don't have to. So in terms of my own week in life, I got my ass kicked by work. I think this is something that would... It happens to everyone, really, at some point. And I guess... So the background is I work in lung cancer research and there was a new trial that started so I was put in place of that. Uh, we we're trying to get you know 20 people to do a trial and you know doing it itself was fine. We're actually halfway done so that's actually a huge relief but a lot of um, workplace dynamics and interactions with other people not myself, I'm actually doing fine, but other people not getting along with other people is a problem. And that's really a lot of the consternation that has affected me this week. Uh, hopefully, we can get through this trial and I can relax again, but maybe a few more weeks of this. So that actually did have an effect on me coming back home completely drained and out of it, so I couldn't really play as many games as I wanted to. I was just uh, completely out of it. So that is where I am right now. And hopefully I will get through it. <laughs> we will see. Talk about esports. The Lynx Meta Weekly 110. Yeah, so they have the two-deck format now, of course. And a lot of these players are gravitating towards Dark Magician for good reason. Dark Magician, it's a deck that could really do it all, and with the sealed tombs and various techs they have against the graveyard, they've become the top deck. It, it's something you could see coming when they first... They had all the cards to do it. The Dark Magic Circle, and then the Magician's Navigation, and then they throw in those banished things. It's not banished things, like anti-banished things. It's really good. And I think they're a favorite to dominate the Kaiba Cup. In terms of representation, of course, a top deck could just sneak through. Something else could 
you know, the, the secret counter to Dark Magician probably will take first place, but um, in terms of sheer representation, I expect them to be top. First place, Serenity, uh, two decks, uh, Sorcery, Conduit, Element Savers. Element Savers, they've seen the trend where they swell up their decks to 25 and more cards. This one's 26. And they could just really afford to throw in their best trap cards. So best trap cards here, three Fiendish Chains, three Floodgates, three Paleozoic Canadius. You've, you've even got two uh, Lapoyas, and Lapoya is a card that I personally ran myself, but there's two copies here that throw more uh, spell negation. And with all that good back row, there's no reason you wouldn't be... like Lapoya has the downside of being 400 attack, but then you want to play it face up so it can negate those spells and traps. With all that good back row, you might as well play this guy in attack mode. And um, this is just a lot of control and banish. Dark Magician decks, they have Magician's Navigation to counter spells and traps. So, uh, And then Dark Magic's, Magic Circle banishes cards. So you have so much back row here. You lose one, who cares, right? You're going to have another one in your hand to lay down the next turn. And Serenity also brought Sealed Tombs, Dark Magician. This is a very standard deck list. I'll just read out the whole deck. So you're using Sealed Tombs. You have one Magician of Dark Illusion, one Kaiku, three Magician's Rod, three regular Dark Magicians, two Cosmic Cyclone, three Dark Magic Circles, one Illusion Magic, one Eye of Tamias, three Magician's Navigation, and two Treacherous Trap Pull, side, um, extra deck Dark Calvary, Dark Paladin, Amulet Dragon. Second place, Last Awful, Cyber Style, Cyber Dragon. So Cyber Dragons are coming back. And this is an extremely aggressive deck list. And that's really how they should win games because they can hit multiple times a turn with the Chimera Tech Rampage Dragon. And, you know, a very aggressive deck list. Two Cyber Dragons, three Cyber Dragon Veer, three Cyber Dragon Core, three Cosmic Cyclone, one Herald of the Abyss, Two Concentrating Current, three Cyberload Fusion, three Cybernetic Overflow. So, um, and you know, Cyber Style depends on you losing life. So there's three Cosmic Cyclones and then the Herald of the Abyss. This is going to be something you see. Herald of the Abyss comes sometimes comes out for uh, the other card that you lose two thousand life points. But the goal is to get as many of those Proto Cyber Dragons out. And of course, uh, two copies of Concentrating Current uh, really helps with the uh, OTK potential of this deck. Last Awful also brought Sorcery Conduit Element Saber, 26 card deck. This guy doesn't have the money that Serenity had because he has zero Fiendish Chain. So it's three Floodgates, three Paleozoics, two Wall of D instead. Four Insano. Sealed Tombs, Dark Magician. This is the same exact deck as Serenity's Dark Magician. This is pretty much the core deck. And then also another Dark Magician deck, Power of the Dark, Dark Magician. This shows how good Dark Magician is. They could just run some mediocre skill like Power of the Dark. And of course, um, it helps monsters on both sides of the board. But I don't think people are really running Spellcasters and Fiends um, in the meta right now besides Dark Magician. So I guess... There are spellcasters in random decks, like Element Sabers will have a spellcaster, but in terms of main deck usage, some zombies, um, winged beasts, fairies, they're not um, they're not going to get a buff from Power of the Dark. And top four, Autumn Leaf, Sealed Tombs, Dark Magician. This is a variant. They have Knight and Sorcerer, and Knight and Sorcerer, besides having a one-time Banish ability, can open up Synchro decks. So this deck, I'll just read it out. One uh, Magician of Dark Illusion, one Kaiku, three Magician's Rod, one Knight and Sorcerer, three Dark Magician, one Cosmic, three Dark Magic Circle, one Illusion Magic, one Eye of Tamias, three Magician's Navigation, two Treacherous, extra deck, one Dark Calvary, one Vermilion Dragon Mech, one Brionic, one Armadis, one Azure Eyes Silver Dragon, and one Gigantic Castle. And another deck, Cyber Style, Cyber Dragon. A slightly different deck from the previous. 
one concentrating current split with one treacherous. Sometimes you see two treacherous and then zero concentrating, so that's kind of the card they split. And instead of Herald, Herald of the Abyss, they have Cybernetic Fusion Support, which lets them lose life points and also fuse an additional time. So it's another way to play Cyber Style. Let's talk about another tournament, the Battle Phase 35. This one has some older decks in it, but they're still pretty good. First place, Soul Cardinal, Compensation, Dark Lords. Um... Side deck, they have all those really good trap cards. Three Fiendish Chains and two Wall of D. And, and then the other deck, um, pretty typical deck. Two Dark Lord Desire, one, three Ixshells, one Superbia, two Nastin, two Texalapakia, one Amdusk, three Banishment of the Dark Lords, two Cosmic, one Galaxy, two Dark Lord Contact, one Sanctified Dark Lord. Second place, Minty. Cyber Style Cyber Dragons. This is the one that runs two treacherous instead of concentrating current, so zero concentrating current, and then it also runs cybernetic fusion support. Otherwise, the monster core is pretty sick core as, as, as it is. Two cyber dragons, three veers, three cores. Always run three cyber load fusions, three overflows, and three cosmic cyclones. Top four Rust 95 Compensation Dark Lords as well. This one runs a uh, Fiendish Chain in the regular deck. A lot of tech cards in the side deck, though. Artifact Lancia being one of them, and then, you know, one of each of the general good trap cards. Finally, fourth place, uh, top four, Star, Seal Tombs, Dark Magician. This is pretty much the core deck. They do, they do, do, um, in, they do, um, avoid Kaiku, though, and Knight and Sorcerer, so that is, bucking the trend of banish abilities. They do they just run two Magician of Dark Illusion instead of that banish card, which is you know, it's strange that you won't follow the trend, but you know, obviously Dark Magicians are good enough that you could just get away with not running those cards. So tier list by Duel Links meta based on those tournaments. We have Dark Magician and Element Sabres. Element Sabres have moved back up um and they attribute it to Dark Lords being declining. And them, you know, their Element Sabres are developing their deck to be an extreme control deck right now. You throw in the best trap cards you have, even if, even if it isn't Fiendish Chain, three Floodgates, and three Paleozoics. Very solid. Tier 2, Black Wings, Dark Lords, and Sheer Nui have fallen down. Sheer Nui are m- mainly countered by that. The Dark Magician, Sealed Tombs, Kaiku, Knight and Sorcerer deal, and that's a big that's a big blow to that Shiranui deck. Tier three Ritual Beasts, they're the only tier three deck right now. Ninjas have been moved up to high potential. They specifically note a My Monster Cards version of Ninjas and Crystrons have fallen off the tier list. So you know, just talking about meta decks in general the KC cup has started it is KC cup stage one you know if you got king of games last time you don't really have to worry about it um make sure even if you don't care about advancing the stage two or anything make sure you play four times a day three times to get your gems one time to get you know some free cards free cards are optional but whatever and um you know i'm just getting through it to get my gems. I've noticed my gems have completely blown up. I've skipped this box, so that's another factor, but you know, really saving up for the next box. And yeah, that's all I have to say about it. Um you have to it's it's annoying if you don't like playing meta decks, I get that, but at the same time, these gems are too good to not work to not, you know, get through something, you know. So make sure you play your games. An announcement that Yu-Gi-Oh! WCS 2020 is in America. Bandit Keith rejoices. This will happen in Minneapolis, Minnesota, August 22nd to 23rd. Um, I mean, I didn't know what to expect for this. I, I don't never, I've never gone to these things, and it being in just, just being in Minnesota, it's not really far at all. So, I could conceivably go, and. I'll see where I am later on in the year. It's still, you know, half a month, half a year away. So, 
a lot of things can change by then. I may just have the urge to travel by then and just go to Minnesota. And, um, you know, it'll be great to meet the famous people in Yu-Gi-Oh! I've never, as I mentioned, I've never, I don't even go to cons. Like, I just don't do any of that stuff. So it'll be pretty cool if I decide to go. Uh, we will see where I am at the point again. And, um, yeah, it, it sounds like it'll be a great thing. I may have the urge to go. We will see. Okay, let's talk about the mini box, Masters of Shadow. Last time we just talked about all the URs and SRs of the box. Last night I just looked at some of the archetypes and some of the cards in it. And I will go through it in a uh, in a way. Let's see. So the Melodious have a ton of cards in this deck. This one is called Boom Prima. Melodious Choir. It's a fusion card. Level 7 Fairy Fusion. Requires Melodious Maestra and a, uh, another Melodious Monster. 1900-2000. This card gains 300 attack for each fusion material used for its fusion summon. This card can make a second attack during each battle phase. If this fusion summon card is sent to the graveyard, target one Melodious Monster in your graveyard, add it to your hands. So, you know, looking at the stars of the Melodious Monsters, this is 7. It typically will take 2 so, it will be 600 extra attack, 2,500 attacker who can hit twice. Um, you know, Cyber Dragons do it better. They hit, and then they have you know more ways to wipe the board. This is just a monster who hits twice. I have to get through a monster and then hit, hit for life points. Uh, if there's no other disruption, it's not that great. You, you have to rely on cards to clear the back row, clear against effects, things like that. A little bit underwhelming for a fusion card. Sonata, the Melodious Diva, level 3 fairy. I'll skip saying fairy because they're all life fairies. Level 3, 1200, 1000. If you control a Melodious Monster, you can special summon this from your hand. When this special summon card is on the field, all fairies gain 500 attack and defense. So the field buff, I guess... This card is useful just for being a special summon. A bunch of these Melodious cards can swarm the board pretty well. They could special summon as long as you have another monster on the board. And that's how they, they do it. They get together on the board. They special summon. They buff each other. This is a buff 500. Again, um, if they get disrupted, it's not that cool. Like, like Let's say they get hit by Wall of D, for example. It's not cool. And they don't really have a way to counter that as far as I can tell. They do have a card I'll talk about later, but this is just their special summon it, buff your cards, sure. Special summon is more important than the buff, but the buff is just there. So, uh, Mozarda, the Melodious Maestra, level 8 fairy, 2600, 2000. Once per turn, you can special summon one light fairy monster from your hand. You cannot special summon other monsters to turn you activate this effect except for light monsters. So it's 8 stars, but there's an easier way to get it out on the board, which makes it not that bad. And this card, you could special summon a Light Fairy monster. It seemed like the previous monster you could just special summon. But this card lets you get out the bigger monsters. There are a bunch of Melodious monsters that are greater than level 4, so like some level 5s and 6s. So this is what helped cheat out the bigger monsters. So this is your bigger play Melodious card. Again, there doesn't seem to be a way to counter back row and things like that. And the Melodious Diva, level 4, 1400-2000. If you control Melodious Monster, you can special summon this card from your hand. You can only special summon Cannon once per turn this way. Once per turn, you can target one Melodious Monster you control, change its battle position. So this card is useful for like countering Econ or anything like that that flips battle positions. It's, it doesn't seem useful for... Switching over a monster into defense mode because they don't really have high defenses either to block an attack, if you will. But it's more for countering that econ, um, a bit situational. Spell card, continuous spell called Fortissimo. Once per turn, you can target a melodious monster you control. It gains 800 attack until your next standby phase, even if this card leaves the field. You can send this card to the graveyard fusion, summon one Melodious fusion monster from your extra deck using monsters you control. So, 800 attack buffer and an extra polymerization. This is maybe a card that you could fit one in. 
Um, or this could just be your polymerization. Um, that's also very possible with this archetype. Um, Juberta, you know, the UR fusion card. Targeting cards in the graveyard and banishing them and gains... It's going to be like a 3,000 attacker, so... This is... Um, they only have two fusion cards, the... Uberta and then the Bloom Prima, so that's what the Fortissimo would be fusing. And the downside of Fortissimo, I just forgot to mention, is that they have to fuse from cards on the board. Polymerization, you could just use it from your hand, obviously. Serenade the Melodious Diva. Level 4, 400, 1900. This card can be treated as two tributes for the tribute summon of a fairy monster. If this card, after this card is special summoned to your side of the field, you can normal summon a Melodious Monster during your main phase this turn in addition to your normal summoner set. So this is a super ramp card. And, yeah, it's a super ramp card for Melodious. While it does count as two tributes for a fairy, which sounds like a Dark Lord thing, the additional ramp summon, the double summon ability, is just for Melodious. So you play Serenade, and then you could just ramp this into that level 8 I was just talking about, uh, Mozarda, and then you could use Mozarda to get another big monster onto the board. So this is a key card. A lot of the Melodious cards are, the key cards are N rarity, which is kind of weird, but Serenade is a key card. Elegy, the Melodious Diva, level 5, 2,200. Special summoned Melodious monsters you control cannot be destroyed by card effects. If this card is special summoned, all fairy monsters gain 300 attacks. So, the goal is to get your level 8 on the board, special summon this one, and then they are immune to card effects. Destruction. So, that seems like a play to make, and then they get a permanent small buff. Level, let's see, Chopina, the Melodious Maestra, level 7, 2300, 1700. Once per turn, you can target one light fairy monster in your graveyard, add it to your hand. Can I activate non-light monster effects during the turn you activate this effect? This one's a little less impressive. It's level 7, 2300 attacker. I'd rather have the level 8 out. And this one further does not get extra monsters onto the board. So we're cycling. Not too impressed with this one. Opera, the Melodious Diva, level 4, 2300, 1000. Cannot attack the turn it's normal summoned or flip face up. This card... If this card is sent to the graveyard as fusion material for a fusion summon, you can activate this effect for the rest of the turn. Melodious monsters you control cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects. So, this is like a classic level 4 2300 beater. It can't attack the turn it's normal summoned. It can't attack the turn that it's fusion summoned, though, so there it is. I was just going to say this is Dark Orc over again, all over again, but... There is a special summon component to it. And then if you use it as a fusion, your monsters can't be destroyed by battle or card effects. So definitely, it's a beater. Yes, the level 4, 2300 is a beater. But it might be better to use it as fusion material. Amtam, the Melodious Diva, level 4, 1000, 2000. If this card is special summoned while you control a Melodious Monster, you can add a polymerization from your deck or graveyard to your hand. If this card is sent to the graveyard as fusion material for a fusion summon, you can target one Melodious Monster you control. It loses 500 attack. If it does, inflict 500 to your opponent. This is a pretty good card. It's pretty much their Blazeman. You can special summon it. You get your polymerization. You make your play. Um, the, the, the 500 burn, I'm not too impressed with that. These monsters don't have a ton of stats. They rely on buffs to get themselves up. And then it lose 500, loses 500, you burn them for 500. It's not the best ability, but you'll take the first ability to stomach you know, a mediocre ability. I mean, 500 burns, 500 burns, sure, you'll take it, but it's better than nothing to be used as fusion material, but you're mainly using this to tutor out polymerization. Solo, the Melodious Songstress, level 4, 1600, 1000. If your opponent controls a monster and you can control none, you can special summon this from your hand. When this card is destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard, you can special summon one Melodious monster from your deck except for solo. So this is like a little cyber dragon. If they have a monster, you can special summon it onto the board. 1600. 
But better yet, you should set this card, let it get destroyed, and then you could special summon any monster from your deck, including that level 8 monster. So, like I said, the N rarity uh, Melodious cards are pretty good. And then the card that might put it all together, Melodious Illusion Trap Card. Target one Melodious monster you control. This turn, that face of monster you control is unaffected by your opponent's spells or traps, and it can make a second attack during each battle phase. So, this is a pretty good trap card for the archetype. They get they ignore effects. Sure, you could hit by Kribo, you could hit by Kite Roid. Those exist. Whatever. Doesn't ma- doesn't care about the back row. They can hit twice. Some of these can get pretty big. Your twenty eight hundred can do that. Your fusion materials can do that. The downside it's it's only targeting one monster, so the rest of them will get affected. But if you have two of these you might be able to win the game and swing for lethal. So this is a pretty good... The thing was pretty trash before, you know, Melodious Illusion. Of course, this probably isn't like a tiered deck completely. It's like a fringe tier 4 probably if you put this all together. But um, yeah, this makes the archetype a lot less worse. A lot... Like this this prevents the archetype from being unplayable. It's better than unplayable now. It's... Fringe competitive for ladder. As that, let's move on to the next archetype, the Synchro Fusions. Big play cards. Let's talk about the uh, spell card to make, that makes it all work. Miracle Synchro Fusion, normal spell. Remove from play your side of the field or graveyard. Fusion materials listed on a fusion monster card that lists a synchro monster as fusion material. Special summon that fusion monster from the extra deck. If this set card is destroyed by your opponent's card effect, then sense the graveyard draw a card. These cards are all fusion monsters that require a synchro monster as a material. This is better... So this is a middle ground fusion. There's basic fusions, where the monsters have to be on the board or in your hand. There's these middle ground fusions, you could use the graveyard. And then there's OP fusions, like Neo's Fusion, where you or Red Eyes Fusion, where you could sp- summon things straight from the deck. This is the middle one, so it's not OP in any means, but you get to reuse your graveyard plays, which is pretty good. And then it has this extra funny bonus where you could set this card. Let's say you're desperate, you're, you set this card, they destroy it, you draw a card. Of course, Cosmic Cyclone exists, that banishes, so, you know, you may not get the payoff at all, you might just fail miserably, but that's a nice little bonus for the card. Talk about the fusions themselves. There's four of them in this set. Ultimate Axon Kicker, level 10 Psychic Fusion, requires Psychic Synchro and any Psychic Monster, 2900, 1700. Must be fusion summoned, cannot be destroyed by card effects. During battle between this attack and card and the defense position monsters whose defense is lower, inflict piercing. When this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle and sends it to graveyard, gain life points equal to the destroyed monster's attack. You're going to typically gain a lot of attack here. I think the regular Axon Kicker, it gained life points. That was the the piercing damage. This one, you gain more. You typically gain the attack. Um, The whole psychic thing of gaining life points through piercing is to trigger... You know, psychics always were around psychokinesis. You pay a thousand life points to destroy any card. And that's kind of big play big cost ability. Um, Psychics haven't been meta for... like That type of psychic play hasn't been meta for a while and never really made it. May have been a King of Games deck back in the day, but right now it's not. Um, I think there are a lot of ways around Psychokinesis, unfortunately, and it's definitely not the card to use in this meta. Well, it's hard to say that. Cyber Dragons like using life points... And that helps their cyber style. But then how would you fit psychics into cyber dragons, right? So I guess psychics just aren't there right now with the archetypes around. And this card will not be as as a result. Dream Arcanite Magician. Level 10. Spellcaster. Requires a spellcaster synchro and a spellcaster. 1400, 2800. Must be fused. 
When it's fused, special uh, place two spell counters on it. It gains a thousand attack for each, so it'll be thirty four hundred attack. Once per turn, you can remove a spell counter from your side of the field to activate one of the following effects: select one card on the field and destroy it, or draw a card. So, Arcanite Magician and the other one, the um, Assault Mode version, they both could destroy cards. This one gives the second ability of drawing a card. So let's say you're down cards, you could draw a card instead of destroy a card. So it requires spellcasters, and that made me think of Fortune Ladies immediately. But the problem is that Fortune Ladies draw cards so well already, they don't need this ability. They could use the ability, select one card and destroy it, but then you could just put Arcanite Magician in your side deck, and you don't have to go through the, the trouble of Miracle Synchro. Churia Gaestrio, level 10 rock fusion, requires two Earth Synchro Monsters, 3200, 2100. During either player's turn, when a card or effect is activated that targets exactly one card on the field and no other cards, you can send one card from your hand to the graveyard and negate the activation. If you do, destroy it. This is a very good card on its own. Um, it has a negate and destroy ability on either player's turn. Doesn't require a card to match like Ultimate Providence where you have to have the same card. So it also has 3,200 attack, which is over 3,000. The problem, of course, is the cost. Two Earth Synchro Monsters. You need to do two Synchros and then you have to play Miracle Synchro Fusion. That's way too many. Not only is it a lot of resources, but it's a lot of steps that you can mess up on. They could use Paleozoic Canadia or Fiendish Chain on you, you know, at any point. And then this gets messed up. So that's the problem here. Too much um, setup required. That goes for the next card too. Goyo Emperor. Level 10 Warrior. Requires 2 Earth Warrior Synchro Monsters. 3300, 2500. And this card or a monster you control that is owned by your opponent. Destroys an opponent's monster by battle and sends it to the graveyard. You can special summon that monster to your side of the field. When your opponent special summons a monster except during the damage step... You can tribute an Earth Warrior Synchro Monster to take control of that monster. If this face of card leaves the field, you can return control of all monsters you control to the owner. This is a very fun card. Um, it has the Goyo thing where if it destroys something, you steal it. But it also applies to your mo the monsters you stolen from your opponent, so they start stealing things. And even better, when your opponent special summons a monster, you can steal that monster by tributing an Earth-type Synchro Monster. Earth Warrior. So you could just straight up steal their monsters. Very slick. But again, impossible. Requires two Earth Warrior Synchro Fusions and then Miracle Synchro Fusion. Overall, this archetype is just for fun. That's it. This, there's no way any of these cards will make competitive play. I don't see it at all. This is a very easy call for me. Next archetype up is the main uh, competitive one here is the ninjas. And frankly, I don't know too much about ninjas, so sorry if I sound like a complete idiot. Let's do it. White Dragon Ninja, level 7 Dragon, 2700 attack, 1200 defense. Cannot be special summoned except with a ninjitsu art card's effect. Spell and, spells and traps you control cannot be destroyed by card effects. So, typically the ninjas are tied to the existence of a ninjutsu art trap card that keeps them alive. And your opponent could destroy those and wipe out your ninjas in a way. That's that's pretty much their weakness. weakness. Their lifeline's tied to a spell art trap. So this, in a way, protects that. Problem is it doesn't stop Cosmic Cyclone, which banishes. You banish it, your ninjas are dead. This could see play, though. It's a dragon... And Ninjutsu Art of Super Transformation requires dragons, dinosaurs, or sea serpents. So this could see play there. Um, I think the Ninjutsu Art of Transformation also included dragons, so it seems all-inclusive. It may make it good enough to see play. Twilight nin Ninja Getsuga the Shogun, level 8, Dark Warrior, 2000-3000. You contribute some of this card by tributing one ninja monster. If this card is in an attack position, you can target two ninjas in your graveyard except for this one. Change this card to defense position. If you do special summon those monsters, you can use this effect once per turn. So the problem with some of those ninja cards is they can't be special summoned by other abilities. Um, 
Like White Dragon Ninja can't be su summoned without the Ninja to art. But Yellow Dragon Ninja could be special summoned by the Ninja. So you really have to know what when which cards work with the Shogun. But in a way, this doesn't really work because their archetype doesn't really tribute summon. This doesn't fit. This does, you know, it has some late game appeal. It's 3,000 defense. You get two more on the board. But then they have to have a way of disposing of those trap cards to make the abilities work again. I don't really see it fitting. That's just what I could say. Yellow Ninja is level 4 wind, 1900, 1800. If this is normal summoned or flipped face up, you can special summon one level 4 or lower ninja monster from your hand in attack or face down defense. Also, you cannot special summon monsters from the extra deck except for ninja monsters. This is a very solid card. It's got good stats, 1900, 1800. It gets a free special summon on another level 4 lower ninja monster from your hand. So, a beast is a card that could work with it. Once per turn, you can... If you control another face of ninja monster, you can return a number of cards your opponent's spells or traps equal to the number of ninjas you have. So you could play yellow ninja, then Ibisu, bounce two cards. And this also has XZ's implications. You get two level fours overlaid right there. So yellow ninja is definitely a prize of this box um, for those future plays. Hidden Village of Ninjutsu Arts Field Spell. If a ninja is summoned to your field, you can target one ninja monster or ninjutsu art in your graveyard added to your hand, but you cannot activate cards or the effects of cards with that name for the rest of the turn. If a ninja monster or ninjutsu art you control would be destroyed by battle or an opponent's card effect, you can banish a ninja monster from your graveyard instead. You can use each effect once per turn. Pretty good for a field spell. Field spells have to be really good for it to see play. This could see play. You could recycle your ninjutsu arts because you have to throw them away for abilities to work. And then you also provide general protection for your ninjas. I think this is a very good field spell. Ninjutsu art of decoy, continuous trap, target one face of ninja monster you control. It cannot be destroyed by battle. So this has a use in stalling. You could just keep a monster in defense mode and this can't be destroyed. That will work against certain decks, but certain... A lot of other decks affect destroy, they banish, they banish spells or traps. So it's really holding out how long you can keep this ninjutsu art of decoy on the board. Of course, like I said, against certain decks you straight out win the game. Most of the time not. So this card doesn't seem good enough to see play right now in this meta. Um Ninjutsu Art of Mirage Transformation. Continuous trap. Tribute one ninja. Target one monster in your opponent's graveyard, special summon it to your field. It's treated as a ninja when it's face up. When this card's face up. When this card leaves the field, send that monster to the graveyard. You can only use one per turn. So, this is more fun than good. You steal your opponent's monsters in the graveyard, conditional on what they're playing. It doesn't make sense in that the types, they're still ninjas, that's like a name archetype, but. Their types and their stars won't line up into ramping to other things. It doesn't really make much sense. Finally, the Worms. Worm Queen, level 8, Reptile, 2700 attack, 1100 defense. You can tribute summon this card in face-up attack by tributing one Reptile Worm Monster. Once per turn, you can tribute one Worm Monster to special summon one Reptile, one Worm Monster from your deck with a level less than or equal to the tributed monster. One tribute, 2700, not bad at all. This can help facilitate monsters from the deck to the board. And, um, yeah. The, it's okay to tribute the worms because they can't, they don't have much attack value anyways. Worm Jaegen. This is one we talked about last week. Level 4 Reptile 1800. If the only monster you control is Worm Zex, you can special summon this from the graveyard and face down defense. If you do remove it from play, it's removed from the field. If it's flipped face up, select one face of monster your opponent controls, return it to the hand. So Worm Yeging does all the work in bouncing opponent's monsters. And Shiny Sophion, a, a duelist in Duelist meta, uh, she actually hit King of Games with Worms. So Worm Yeagen really does a lot of work in bouncing opponent's monsters. Um, this duel could be sneaky good. And they have XZ's implications later down the line. Finally, Worm Illidan. Where is Wormillion? 
Level 5, 2,800. Each time a card is set on your side of the field, place a worm counter on this card. You can remove two worm counters from this card. Select one card your opponent controls and destroy it. So this is a very slow control ability. It's good in targeting spells or monsters. Um, and you could really just populate this with back row. You play two back row, destroy something. Play two back row, destroy something. And worms are typically set because they have flip effects. Um, this You would like to cheat this card out because he's level 5 with 2,000 attack. Bad stats. Um... Yeah, I don't see it being played unless you can cheat it out. I can't think of a way for it to be cheated out. Probably some way to do it to make this card not horrible. <laughs> but it is. So, that is it for Masters of Shadow. I am skipping this box completely. I think this is one of the boxes that I really had no... I, like, want to buy at all. The, like, the cards I want to buy the most are the Worms, frankly. <laughs> Yellow Ninja is good, too. But, um... Yeah, none of the other cards make it appealing to me, which is good, so I could save money. Save gems and money. Alright, so Dual Quest is happening, and there is a big change to Dual Quest. They made it easier. The secret levels previously were dual, legendary duels 10 times to get those secret levels. Granted, the secret levels are smaller now, that you get 30 gems or 30 coins from what I could tell. I mean, 30 skill chips, I mean. But right now, the the missions are fighting standard duelists. And the ones you have to fight are Mickey, who's a little kid with black hair. He's in every world. Emma, little girl, brown hair, every world. Jay, an adult with brown spiky hair. He's everywhere. Ashley, adult woman, black hair, everywhere. Evan, you have to fight him three times. Slifer Red in GX world, brown hair. And Chloe, I think she's a teenager, purple hair girl in 5D. So you have to fight Evan and Chloe three times. I haven't done that yet, but I've done the other ones. And they're, most of them are 30 gems. Ashley was a 30 skill chip one. So this definitely avoids that gate grind. You have to do a stupid gate grind to fight them 10 times. They've definitely fixed dual quest. In addition to that, we are getting a card with three copies for the first time, and that's Amazon as trainee. We previously had one from a level up reward. It's a level four warrior earth, as is all the Amazonists, 1500, 1300. Monsters destroyed by battle of this card are returned to the bottom of the deck instead of going to the graveyard. If this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle, it gains 200 attack. So this is a meta card right now. It's avoiding the graveyard, which is what, Everyone did to avoid Shirinui. <laughs> and um, we're getting three copies of this card, but it's just the 1500 in the end who has to destroy things by battle. Even Amazonus being Amazonus Onslaught, that's like an effect destruction. It won't help trigger this ability. So she will have to hit things. I think she has to use the um, one of those equip spells, like Amazonus Heirloom or something, to let it survive getting attacked and things like that to get through. Alright, so we've reached Doug's casual deck of the week. And this week, he is recording through a storm to bring you a big sea serpent deck. It kind of goes along with the theme. He, uh, with the ninja cards, Ninjutsu Art of Super Transformation, it includes sea serpents as one of the types. So he has conjured up Daedalus and Neo Daedalus. Neo Daedalus being the big playability. So... Here is Doug Dimidul's Ninja Daedalus deck. Hey there, this is Doug Dimadul with Doug's Casual Deck of the Week. 
Now, if it's starting to sound a little noisy around me, it's because I'm trying to record this uh, right as that major storm is uh, moving through the uh, state of Florida. So, uh, a lot of noise going on right now. Hopefully, we'll keep power. But uh, anyway, I'm pretty thrilled about the new mini box, and I wanted to build a ninja deck, but not in the sense that a lot of other people are doing. They really seem to be tying it in with dragons or with other ninja uh, uh, monsters that are already available. I wanted to put a little unique spin on this not the most effective tactic but it's still pretty fun if you're uh, kind of a fan of the uh, neo uh, daedalus uh, uh, cards as i am with uh, with mako tsunami and this goes all the way back to the, i think the very first mini box with levia dragon daedalus it's a you are out of that first mini box it's a level seven sea serpent where uh, you could send one face up uh, umi you control to the graveyard and destroy all other cards on the field with uh, 2600 attack and uh, 1500 defense so uh, i run this with mako tsunami with the skill uh, mythic depths and this is where you start with umi on the field so uh really what i'm trying to do is utilize the sea serpent ability to take advantage or sea serpent uh, uh type to uh, really take advantage of the ninjutsu art of super transformation that's the new trap card in the newest mini box uh it's a continuous trap where you activate this card by targeting one ninja monster you control and one face-up monster your opponent controls send them to the graveyard and then special summon one dragon dinosaur or sea serpent type monster from your deck whose level is less than or equal to the combined original level of the sent monsters when this card leaves the field banish that monster so uh really i was trying to just find a way to make this a levia dragon daedalus deck but if you activate its effect you're gonna pop the ninjutsu art of super transformation thus uh, really mooting the whole point so what i tried to do was tie this into the uh i think you get this card at the card trader the ocean dragon lord neo daedalus which is i believe a level eight sea serpent 2900 attack 1600 defense this card cannot be normal summoned or set, and this card cannot be special summoned except by tributing one Levia Dragon Daedalus. You can send one Umi you control to the graveyard to send all cards in both players' hands and on the field to the graveyard except this card. So really what this does, it could just totally ruin your opponent's uh, you know, card advantage. It could totally ruin everything under the sun while leaving a 2,900 uh, beater on the field with nothing to stop it. And we're not destroying cards. We're sending everything to the graveyard. So so it minimally activates any effects that are on destruction. So that's why I really like this. So you want to have this card in your hand, and you want to at least have one copy of Levia Dragon Daedalus in your deck. That's why I like to run two copies of Daedalus and two copies of Neo Daedalus. I'm still trying to play around with the ratios, but uh, no, it's still pretty fun. As for other water monsters, I try to run my copies of Warrior of the Atlantis level 4 uh, as a way to search out a Legendary Ocean. I'll run two additional copies of a Legendary Ocean in this deck just to kind of reload and reactivate the Ocean Dragon Lord Neo Daedalus effect if I draw into it and I top deck appropriately. But other than that, it's a very luck-driven deck. But what you want to have are your three copies of Ninja Grandmaster Hanzo, level 4, 1800 attack. Whenever this is normal summon, you add one Ninjutsu art card from your deck to your hand. That's really the whole purpose of why we're using them uh that way we get that ninjutsu out of super transformation to ultimately get into our levia dragon daedalus play uh i also run my three copies of karakuri ninja mdl 339 sazank uh 1200 attack 200 defense uh it has to attack if able you know the whole thing but when this card is flipped face up select one uh face up monster on the field and send it to the graveyard so uh that's really just a good and again it falls under the ninja archetype so you're able to use this with ninjutsu art of super transformation so just a really good ur if you have it and then what i like to do is i like to run yellow ninja just to kind of flood the board if i need to so i can get a tribute summon uh, squared away in the next turn but yellow ninja very underrated card level four warrior 1900 attack 1800 defense if this card is normal summoned or flipped face up you can special summon one level four or lower ninja monster from your hand in attack position or face down in defense position also you cannot special summon monsters from the extra deck for the rest of the turn except ninja monsters not a problem because this deck doesn't utilize an extra deck so uh really the whole point is just to get into levia dragon play so that you could hopefully tribute it away for a neo neo daedalus and just 
ruin your opponent's field and their hand all at the same time. It's brilliant. It's very satisfying. Not very consistent, but uh, that's effectively what the deck is made up of. You got to have your Daedalus package with Neo Daedalus and Dragon, or uh, yeah, with Neo Daedalus and Daedalus, and then you also have your three Ninja Grandmaster Hanzo, three Karakuri Ninja Sazanks, and your two copies of Yellow Ninja. And then just for good measure, for consistency, I like to run Warrior of Atlantis at three copies just to search out one of my two copies of a legendary ocean when needed and then you have to have three copies of ninjutsu art of super transformation the sooner this is in your hand the better the sooner you can get into your plays but uh as far on the ladder this is not a deck that i would like to take on the ladder it's not effective at all uh but playing pv uh pve and playing some more casual settings Um, I gotta say, this deck is just an absolute blast. Uh, I'm always trying to find a way to incorporate kind of back to my roots. I was always a fan of the water archetypes, especially with Levia Dragon. That was one of my favorite cards when I first started getting into Yu-Gi-Oh! So, being able to incorporate that in a way, and with this new ninja archetype, uh, making this just an alternate way to get this card onto the field, um... Yeah, it's it's unusually satisfying. So I think it's a it's a very fun deck. I recommend you giving this a shot if you're in a more casual setting. But uh, yeah, that's it for my casual deck of the week. I will see you next time. Take care. All right, thanks, Doug. And you can check out Doug Dimondul every week on this podcast with a casual deck over the week. Check out his Twitter page, Yu-Gi-Oh! Deck Talk. And he is a former podcast host as well, so he has some things in the archives of his past podcast. So we're going to close up this episode of the podcast with the Just Chatting section. I'm surprised they even got it out this week with the hectic work week, but... My podcast question of the week was, what games do you play when you're tired of Duel Links? Alternatively, what hobbies do you partake in place? Totally not an existential problem here. I was definitely not tired of Duel Links. I was tired and I couldn't play Duel Links. That's kind of the the difference. But personally for myself, ever since I started playing Duel Links, it's, it's become my main game. And I also play a, another game, Warframe. Warframe is... One of the best games, I think. It's just, it's been, it's been around forever. It's free. It's constantly in development. The staff digital extremes is just amazing. A lot of great things in Warframe. I'm a completely horrible at it, though. And it's a game that you have to grind through. Um, definitely worth checking out. That's all I have to say about Warframe. I also play Pokemon Go on my um, on my phone. So that's a relaxing thing. I do, you know, to and from work. If you want to friend me in Pokemon Go, just let me know on Twitter. So I can send you gifts. I live in New York, so a lot of gifts here. Let's talk about everyone else. A lot of people participated in this question of the week, so thanks everyone. At Station Gyoza, I play a third-person MOBA called Smite. Super fun, skill-intensive, and competitive. I also skateboard, exercise, and binge-watch TV shows that came out 2 to 20 years ago. Horrible Scrabble, Ring Fit Adventure. Because you know you need those muscles to play a children's card game. Average Gatsby, I usually play Rage Shadow Legends as it's one of the biggest mobile role-playing games of 2019, and it's totally free. Currently, almost 10 million users have have joined Raid over the last 6 months, and it's one of the most impressive games in its class. He just sold it in an ad right there for Raid Shadow Legends. Shiny Sofian says Pokemon and Smash mainly. Yu-Gi-Oh! Deck Talk says anything Pokemon, always a solid choice. Pro Bench Warmer of the Chainlink Podcast says Wordscapes, I'm on level uh, 1,438. Nasser al Masafri says I grew up playing Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh, so I always change between them. Redbird10 replied, same here. I grew up playing both Yu-Gi-Oh and Pokemon. Grand Harrier, longtime supporter of this podcast, says Overwatch is my other drug of choice. Uh, yes, uh, I think Blizzard games can be quite addictive sometimes. 
Cypher says Fortnite and Pokemon. The L game says Auto Chess, Apex Legends, and World of Warcraft. Speaking of World of Warcraft, I've only played the free trial. And then I was completely... I, w- I just find myself in the middle of the night. And I don't know what has happened. So I'm glad I've never played the real version of Warcraft. EKH sounds like I got tired of Duel Links a long time ago. But no lie, I miss our community. You're welcome back anytime. Camel1 says Legends of Runeterra is the hottest card game out right now. And it's a good vacation away from Duel Links. Fish3 says I play a lot of indies on my Switch or Clash Royale or Study Go. Zombear V says, to be honest, Auto Chess and its variants are all pretty good when Duel Links is annoying me too much. And finally, me, Dante, Kingdom Hearts, Union Cross, or Pokemon Go. The first option can still me can still give me gotcha game pain, so I often prefer, prefer a nice little stroll looking for mons. That's everyone who has responded. Thank you very much. Um, you know, obviously people play other games other than Duel Links. Just wanted to get a sense of what it was. The Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh thing is pretty telling, though. It's like, that's those are two shows that were just on, um, Kid Kids WB or whatever they called it back then, and it's funny how international and how how much of an influence it has on had on us as people. That's it for the podcast. Let's see upcoming news. KC Cup is going on. It started on February sixth, going on to the sixteenth. Waiting for stage two next week, probably. Um, in February, Duelist Chronicles GX Society of Light, new card Dragonic Tactics, new Astro Phoenix skill. Mid February, Mission Circuit with a new card called Double Ripple. Mid February, Dark Signer Carly Carmine's retired. Late February, obtained Blair Flanagan. Late February, Scheming Weevil with new cards. And late February, DSOD World level cap up to level 35. That's it this week. Um, check out the podcast anywhere. Just search the Dual Assessment Podcast. Like, leave comments, do whatever you could. Check out the podcast. These notes are on the dualassessment.wordpress.com. Email me with any inquiries to dualassessment at gmail.com or Twitter, dual underscore assessment, my own account at Green Ranger CCG. All right, so that's it. Good luck in the Kaiba Cup, everyone. Make sure you play your games. I will see you next time.